guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here and you are looking for a warm, friendly, helpful community of vermicomposters, you are in the right place. Today, I am going to take my two European Nightcrawler bins and combine them into one for the winter to help with the mass. And to that point, we're going to be talking about European Nightcrawlers and what to feed them, what's the deal with their breeding, and also what kind of environmental requirements are there for the European Nightcrawlers. So I'm gonna put you down and then we're gonna get started taking this lower bin and adding it to the one above. First things first, I'm going to pull out all of the pre-harvest area over here. It's still pretty wet, but I wanna make sure that I keep everything separated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this mostly finished compost and I'm gonna put that in the corresponding area up above of the almost finished compost. You can see that it's still pretty wet, but I'm willing to bet we can get a harvest here in another month. And there it goes on the top. I'm gonna keep doing this until the bottom is empty of all of the finished compost. And then we're gonna take a look at the rest of the bin here and feed it up. Okay, here we are. That's uh, not quite all of it, but we will get there. This bin's gonna be super full for a while until I can get that harvested. Okay, first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about what do I feed these guys? And what I feed them is mostly my people food and Amazon boxes and shredded junk mail, which you can see, you know, right here on top. This is the dry stuff that I just keep on top to keep the bugs away. So that is my goal is to make more castings and get rid of my waste. If your goals are different, then you know you should obviously uh, re-evaluate what you're doing if it is the same as what I'm doing. My goal is not to get really big worms to sell. My goal is to get lots of castings for my edible and ornamental gardens. So we're gonna take a look here at the business end and see how these guys are doing on their food. And then we can keep talking about how the European Nightcrawlers as a breed are a little bit different than the Red Wigglers, the African Nightcrawlers, and the Blue Worms. Okay, let me get you put up and then we can start looking in on this. Okay, here we are. This is the uh, dry part that I keep on top most of the time to uh, prevent bugs from getting in. We fed quite a bit of regular food last time, but we also fed um, the clippings from my plants. And as you can see, some of them look uh, pretty decent still and uh, probably are trying to root, but I have more than enough jade plants, so I do not need more of those. But we are going to kind of take a look in here. Dragon fruit does not look like it's getting very far. Looks like something's been eaten on it, though. Kind of digging in here to the mostly finished part here in the middle. And you can see a lot of the, the eggshell and the flecks of uh, like mulch that was on top of the plants that didn't make it. But for the most part, this part is, is looking pretty, pretty finished. So we usually scoot that over to this part, to the, uh, the end where it starts to cure, and I pull out all the big chunks. So in regards to the, the European Nightcrawlers, they do breed a little bit differently than the Red Wigglers in that they, they may have just as many cocoons. But those cocoons are usually much bigger and the wisps or baby worms that come out are generally much bigger, probably two to three times as big. So even though they have just as many cocoons, you don't get as many worms in the cocoons, but they do seem to mature a lot faster in my experience. The, the cocoons tend to hatch, you know, two or three of the babies, but then, you know, they're pretty good size when they're, you know, just hatched. I'm trying to find one for you. This one here is probably only a week or two old they are just really good size. Here's, here's the one of the babies. This one is probably pretty recently hatched. Where did he go? There he is, right there. So this is probably a newly hatched 
um, European Nightcrawler. You can see his little yellow tail there. You can see some other bug, one of his friends. But this is newly hatched. The Red Wigglers are probably half this size when they're brand new out of the cocoon. So you end up with um, more bigger worms that can then breed faster and then also give you more worms. So I think some people have done experiments to see how many worms do they end up with at the end of uh, six months or so. And believe it or not, the, the Red Wigglers and the European Nightcrawlers were pretty neck and neck, really, um, as far as how many worms there were at the end of the time period. Um, but I just think that's because they mature faster and they themselves can start breeding earlier. Normally it takes them about three months to get to be breeding. Ooh, almost got a worm ball there. Look at that. Good worms. And it is getting a little cooler in the basement. It's in the 60s now. But these guys are not going to stop, which goes into my next topic, which is basically the environment that the worms like to be in. The European Nightcrawlers are just as cold tolerant as the Red Wigglers, but I have found that they do not eat as much when it gets hot. So if I had to, you know, give advice on, you know, what to keep the worms at, I would definitely say that the the European Nightcrawlers do not like to be over 80 degrees Fahrenheit. They just, uh, they're not dying at that temperature, but they're definitely not living their best life. They're not eating as much. They're not breeding as much. They're just kind of, uh, not really completely dormant, but definitely slowing down. Whereas the Red Wigglers will, they'll probably keep rolling till about 85. I'll put the uh, metric up there for the rest of the world. But uh, so these guys are going to get a good healthy feeding because there's going to be twice as many worms in here going forward as there was previously. So let me go get them some food. I have some nice stinky rotted food that I have been frozen and thawed. Let's get these guys some food. Okay, here is the prepared bedding. This is uh, shredded office paper, shredded Amazon boxes. I'm going to give them a nice little buffer here so that the food doesn't get directly on the worms. Because it is really rotten, I really don't want to expose them to it just in case. This is about a gallon of food here. Got some uh, little uh, butternut squash, mostly butternut squash, tomatoes, some pineapple. But everything's been frozen, so it should go over pretty well. I'm going to go get the unfinished part of the bottom bin and put it on top of here. Okay. I'm going to completely cover that over so no critters decide they want to come in here and lay babies and then I end up with flies. It's always good to make sure that everything is completely covered up. It uh, helps prevent worms from uh, turning into fly colonies. Then I'm going to give them a little bit more bedding on top of that. As you can tell, this is not my normal prepared bedding that uh, has coconut coir in it. I've run out again. So we're just going to have to lump it a little bit here, but this will, again, keep the moisture in for the food and hopefully keep the flies out. Now let's take a look and see how full this bin is now that I've taken two and put it into one. All right, and then here we are completed. It is very, very, very full. In fact, I'm gonna have to take some of the castings and put them in blue because this poor little bin can't take it all. If you found this content useful, go ahead and give it a muddy thumbs up. And if you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you wanna know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring the bell icon. We have the playlist for the European Nightcrawlers over here, and if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video over here. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.